Well, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, so, in, so far in today's session, we've heard uh, many talks on how photonics and all, of, all photonics can allow us to enhance communication in the complex networks that we use today. Uh, and in my talk, I'm going to take a slightly different spin on it and show you that integrating more photonics uh, will lead to better computation, uh, in particular in machine learning and artificial intelligence. So, so to begin, I want to first talk about how great machine learning and artificial intelligence is, is already uh, for everyday life. And in particular, uh, it's actually helped me uh, to make this little figure here to show you like an image of what a photonic processor will look like that will help us deliver energy advantages. Now, as you can see from the prompt that I sent to a large language model, I generated an image that looks like a photonic processor. It's not perfect yet. For example, the symbols NTT don't look quite like what we want it to look like, but you can see it's really useful. You can imagine passing this to an illustrator who can then kind of spruce it up and make it look like what you want. What's really more amazing uh, about these large language models, uh, such as the one that I'm using, which is ChatGPT, but also Tsuzumi, uh, developed by NTT, is that it can do a variety of things. It doesn't just generate images, it can also generate text for you, like translation. Uh, my Japanese is not perfect, but you know, it, it really works much better than, say, Google Translate. And I think that's really impressive, considering that one technology can do multiple things. Uh, as great as this technology is, uh, there's definitely a cost to it. And the way to best visualize this cost is to look at this plot, which shows how the energy consumption has been rising uh, as a function of time. And what's really amazing here is that for a long time, machine learning uh, gradually increased its energy performance. But at some point, at around 2010, there was a landmark result. It was actually done by Jeffrey Hinton in the University of Toronto, showing that these models called deep neural networks uh, can have very high, uh, can have the capacity to perform a large number of computations very well. And after that, this has really transitioned to a uh, curve that's even more uh, scaling even faster than Moore's law. So, so this is extremely unsustainable. And, and as the previous speaker has already mentioned, uh, data center consumption is becoming a big issue, uh, one that's of societal scale. Uh, and it's also going to globally affect the energy, uh, the kind of emissions that we, that we have uh, in today's world. Uh, so with that, I want to convince you for how photonics uh, can play a role in helping to solve this energy crisis. I'm a scientist, so this talk will be a little bit scientific. So I figure what I'll do is to kind of introduce what a uh, artificial neural network looks like, like what the mathematics is actually is performing, and then sort of show you how photonics can help you actually enhance it. So to begin, this is what an artificial neural network, or what they call deep neural networks, look like. And the key reasons that deep neural networks work very well is there's this hierarchical layered uh, computation that it performs. So here's a small, simple video showing how that works. Uh, what happens is that when given an input image, so this is that image of my cat, actually. Uh, his name is called Kumo, because he looks like a cloud. Uh, that image is passed in into these layers of computation. Uh, what happens here is very interesting, which is the input to each layer and the output of each layer is fed as the input to the next layer. So there's this hierarchical layered notion to it. And what that allows you to do is capture the idea of abstraction. So if you want to classify whether this image is a cat or a dog, what this network does is breaks it down into sort of figuring out whether they're circles or lines, and then using that information to figure out how many legs or mouth there is. You know? So if I told you this object you know, had, had four legs and one mouth, you already know it's not a chicken. And so that's how it basically breaks something complicated into its parts uh, to tell you the information you need. And this is the same ability human use to essentially navigate the complex world. So, but what is this elementary thing that's being repeated over and over again in a deep neural network? Well, it turns out it's a very simple mathematical operation that takes this form. And for the purposes of this talk, what I want you to focus on is this thing called matrix vector multiplication. Um, and I would like to explain it using the simplest model possible where you have two inputs and two outputs. Okay? And in, in this literature, they, they call these inputs sort of two neurons and two, out, two output neurons. But for the purposes of this, you just need to think of a neuron as a number. Okay? And all this thing does is that it takes numbers to numbers. And there's some formula that's in charge of taking numbers to numbers. So what's the formula? So the formula is extremely simple. And it takes the form as follows, where the output here is given by the input x1 
multiply it by some weight. So the weight is this line over here. And this thing repeats by weight on x2. So you can think of this as two connections. And the next variable, y2, is also related to the two input variables. OK, so it's actually a very simple mathematical operation that involves just multiplication and addition. And the key thing that I want you to know here is that if you have two neurons, there are four operations that you need to perform, right? Because you can see four orange curves here. As you get to the three neuron case, you have nine operations. Uh, as you can see, the complication has increased because each person, sort of each neuron needs to talk to the other neurons. And how this thing scales is very interesting, which is that if you have n neurons, you have n squared operations. And that's really one of the key things I would like you to take away, uh, which is that in the ion age or in the big data age, this n, this number of neurons, is increasing vastly. So it used to be, you know, back in the 1980s, it would be on the order of tens or hundred, now it's in the order of thousands and soon to be tens of thousands. And as this goes up, you can imagine the square really increasing the number of operations significantly. All right, so what happens when you try to do this computation with digital electronics? And the answer is very simple. The energy consumption actually just scales with n squared. Turns out the number is one picojoule, uh, but when n is large and you have to do a lot of this, this is becoming a big problem. In fact, uh, this is a bit of a tongue in cheek, but you can literally cook a piece of meat on a digital electronic computer because of all the energy that it's radiating uh, from, from the heat. What's different about photonics, and this is, may sound surprising at first, is that the energy consumption scales differently. Instead of n squared, it scales as n. So as n increases, you can imagine that a photonic system will consume less energy than an electronic system. Uh, the reason for that is actually quite intuitive once you reason about it. In photonics, uh, what you can do is supply the energy to essentially encode the information of the inputs and measure the outputs. But sort of this processing that happens in the middle to compute this, this operation is free. Uh, and the reason for that is no different from the eyeglasses that uh, some of you are wearing in the audience. Uh, what it takes as input uh, is basically some scenery, and on the output it fixes, you know, the, the scenery that, that is blurred out because of myopic vision. But if you notice one crucial thing, your eyeglasses are not connected to a battery. Right? It just works passively. It's a piece of optic that just does the computation for you. And the exact same thing happens in a photonic chip. Once you have the light flowing in, it just flows through the chip and it performs the computation for you. And it is because of this that the, cons the sort of scaling arguments goes as n instead of n squared. Uh, and so if there's one thing I want you to take away from this talk, you know, it's that optics is fundamentally different than digital electronics for computation. And the reason for that in, is that in optics, the, the connection is free. You know, things can talk from one to another node without any energy consumed. And if there's one curve that shows you this, it's in showing that for low number of neurons, uh, you will have digital electronics perform better. But as you go higher and higher in the number of neurons in the age of big data, we'll have optics do better than digital electronics. Right, so at this point, I've basically summarized what is called you know, the, the typical case that folks will make for why photonics is better for machine learning. But at NTT Research, we've been thinking of going one step further on can we do even better? Can we even go beyond this n-square scaling? And so here are some sort of two pieces of work that we've been doing in NTT research that I want to just flash out. Uh, the first is that when you want to do this operation called matrix vector multiplication, uh, it really forces you and constrains you on the kinds of photonic systems you can use. So one of the things we've done in this work that was published uh, in the last two years is to show that any sort of controllable optical system can do machine learning, uh, as long as you figure out how to kind of control it appropriately. And with that, we even showed that you can do this with broadband optical pulses and with nonlinear optics, things that are traditionally not used for machine learning acceleration. Uh, in the second piece of work, we used uh, something called a lithium nitrate nanophotonic chip, and we were able to program its refractive index distribution to perform optical computing. So the traditional way that things are performed uh, for machine learning is you have these single mode waveguides, like that are confined in specific sort of you, you can think of wires, and then in using those wires to route things around, perform the computation. Now, what we use here is instead just a water, it's just, it's just like a wave that's very complex. You know, imagine the water waves in your bathtub. And using the complex interference of those waves that happen, 
by designing the refractive index profile, we were also able to perform this computation. And this is what the experiment looks like. You have light shining from the top. One thing that I wanted to emphasize is this idea. I was actually a conceive at NTT Device Technology Lab at Hashimoto-san's group. And so this is actually an example of the kind of synergy that we have between the different NTT research labs uh, that we have. All right, so that's basically it. I hope to have convinced you that photonics is not only exciting for telecommunication or data comm, but it's also very exciting for, for, for computing and in particular for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Thank you. Yeah.